Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai and today we're going to be creating bonsai from a rose bush. Alright, so before we begin with this rose bush, I'd first like to show you this little rose bonsai that I created two years ago from a little piece of material quite similar to this one here. So as you can see on the bottom of this tree, it's got quite a nice nibari or root flare on the surface that makes the tree look sort of grounded in and powerful. Although on the back side of it here, it doesn't have much of a nibari, so I put that to the corner of the pot. But maybe in the future, I'll plant this deeper in order to try and get more radial roots coming from that area. But I'm quite happy with how it is at the moment. Moving up the trunk and into the branches, you can actually see some buds starting to appear that will open in spring. And the same year that I planted this rose, I actually got a flower on it, which I was really excited about. It just looked really cool having like a little tiny rose flower on a little bonsai tree. So this is what we're gonna to aim to create something like today from this material. And the tools that we're going to be using here today are a chopstick, a bent fork, some tweezers, some root printing shears, wire cutters, branch cutters, twig cutters, and some gin pliers. In total, this rose bush cost me six pounds which was quite cheap for what it is. And it grows these beautiful white roses. And in the pot in total, I can see there is three stems going into the soil. So we can actually make three bonsai trees from this one bush. Roses don't really mind being repotted in winter, so long as they're protected from the frost if they're put into shallower pots. So let's take this out, see how the roots are. This is my first repot of the year. The roots look to be in pretty good health. No signs of rotting. So I'm just gonna start by breaking away the top piece of the soil. And my first goal is to separate these three stems. So as you can see here, there's a tree there, a tree there, and a tree here. So let's see if this will separate if I pull it. Don't wanna to rip too many roots here, but. All right. All right, so now we have three separate trees. Now I'm going to take a chopstick and begin to loosen the soil around the roots, trying not to tear or snap any of the roots that's here. It's got lots of big healthy roots coming off of this here, which I'm really happy to see. I'm gonna assume that this came from a cutting off of a different rose tree, just based on how it is in the pot. And if you do take rose cuttings, you will notice that roses root extremely well, even without any rooting hormone. Rose cuttings can really be taken at any time of the year, although it really depends on which type of cutting you take. You've got hardwood cuttings and softwood cuttings. If you want to take a hardwood cutting from like a thicker branch, it's best to take them in autumn or early autumn, just after the tree has finished flowering. And for softwood cuttings, they can be taken in late spring, and summer from the new growth of that year. So I've now removed quite a lot of soil from this. Let's go give these roots a nice wash. And I'm gonna decide which roots to keep and which ones to prune off. Whenever the tree sits in the pot, I would like all of the roots to fan out nice and radially. And as I rake these roots out, I can already see a root that I don't think belongs, which is this one growing straight down. Although I could maybe stretch it this way, have it like that, yeah. I think that works pretty well. It's always good to try different things because I was gonna cut this off just a moment ago and now that I realize that I can stretch it this way, I'm gonna keep it. It already has quite a nice nibari as it's nice and flat underneath here. So it's almost like this was trained to be a bonsai from the get-go. I can already see this root here I'd like to remove. Although it is a feeder root, it's on a different root plane from the other roots around it. So I can remove that. There's many more roots on this side of the tree than there is back here. Remove some of these undersided ones that are not on the same root plane, just to try and thin out this area. So this is the root flare on here at the moment, nice and radial. To me, that's a perfect starting for a nice nibari and a bonsai. I'm gonna plant this into this little small plastic pot. And as I was looking for this pot, I ended up finding a rose that I did just like this last year. And you can see here where I made the first cut on the trunk and the new leader developed growing up here. I made another cut here and then another leader developed. And I think I made a cut here and then this branch developed. Quite a lot of taper. And because roses grow so fast, you can get that much taper in the space of one year. And if this were in a little bonsai pot now, 
This would be a mame bonsai. Mame in Japanese means bean, as it's a little tiny tree. Now, as you can see, I can't quite get this into the pot as the roots are too long. So I'm gonna give them a profile cut and I never really want to try and stuff roots inside to make it fit as this will grow roots in weird directions and it'll ruin all that nice work that we did trying to get a nice radial nabari. Now I'm going to make up some soil that I'll be using to pot these trees into. This is maybe one to three millimeter in particle size and this is normally for mame bonsai. And the reason why I'm mixing the compost with the bonsai soil is that roses in particular really love loamy type of soils that hold a lot of moisture. Just like this one here, it's been in there a year and I think it's in pure compost and it's doing quite well. I would also like the soil to retain a little bit more moisture than pumice, akadama and lava rock can hold because it's gonna be in quite a small pot. I wouldn't want to be watering this four times a day in the summer. So to wire the tree in the pot, I'm going to use some one and a half millimeter aluminum bonsai wire. The holes on this pot are quite small as they are, so I'm just gonna cut bigger holes in this thing. I don't really mind if it breaks like it did here. I'm gonna be putting some potting mesh on the inside. So I've wired the potting mesh like this. So I'm just seeing now what height I would like the tree to be at. And if I were to put it here and wire it in, the soil would be up to there. So I think I need to bring it a little bit higher. So as I pot it, I wanna make sure that that root that was springing in still goes out radially. I want all these to be nice and spaced properly. You can really take your time with this so long as the roots stay nice and moist. Push them down a little. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Now just to bring this little wire around the trunk. Now that I have wrapped it around the trunk like this, I'm just gonna intertwine them by hand to start with. And I can cut them here. And then just tighten it in with the gin pliers. And that prevents it from moving. And I'm just gonna to top it off with some more bonsai soil. That should keep the roots nice and moist until it grows more. It is already beginning to look like a bonsai. So one option is to cut the tree way down in height and have this branch here as the new leader of the tree or the new apex and we'll have quite a short tree then it would take quite some time for it to get more leaves and branches again. But another option, which I think is the more preferable option when it comes to a rose, is to leave it tall and slender with delicate lines. So it'll be kind of the opposite of this one. This one's got nice, strong taper. This one's gonna look somewhat dainty. And it kind of lends itself to the small leaves on the rose also. And when it blossoms, I think it will match that style. So I'm taking more one and a half millimeter wire. I'm gonna start by wiring around this branch and I'm gonna treat these branches very delicately. I don't want the wire to be super tight around them. I'd also like to say that this tree is in leaf at the wrong time of the year. And that's because it was growing as an indoor plant in a shop and sold as an indoor rose bush which is a little bit strange, I think. So if it loses its leaves now, I think it's gonna be okay. A little stub in here I can take off. And now simply by wiring these two branches out, the tree looks a lot less congested. I think these branches can stay as they are, as an apex, and it's starting to get a nice shape as an outline for a tree. I'm gonna leave this tree as it is now, just to see how it develops in spring. And then let's work on the other two trees. That's all the root work done on these other two rose bushes. I'm gonna plant one of them into a soft plastic pot, this really flexible plastic. They're really cheap to get, and they're good for younger trees that are just in training. So I know immediately I'll be taking the flower off of this. So beautiful. So I've wired the mesh in, 
and I'm going to feed the wire up through the bottom. It can be a little bit tricky with these soft plastic pots as they flex a lot, but if you're a little patient, you'll be all right. So I've pushed the wire out to the bottom just to give the pot a better shape. So I'm packing the soil down quite tightly. And I think that gives the pot a little bit more integrity. Again, just wrapping the wire around the tree and giving it a twist to hold it in the pot. Please let me know in the comments if you have worked with a soft plastic pot like this before. If you have any tips for working on it, as it's a little bit fidgety. That's it held in place. Now just a little bit more soil. Now that this is repotted, I'm just going to give it a quick prune. And all I want to do is prune it back to its first set of leaves. I'm going to try and make this one quite compact. Quite a lot come off there. I think as this tree has been in my garden a few days after buying it, the tree acclimatized and realized that it's not meant to have leaves at this time of year. So I just touch the leaves here. They knock off quite easily, which isn't a problem. I'm sure it will bud back no problem in spring. I can actually see some little buds starting on here. This one here is quite large. I think I'm gonna make this as small as possible, just so there's not too much strain on the roots. Take this off and I can take this main branch off. So now you've got a little mame tree, which I think looks a lot better than all them other branches for this particular tree. And this here will become the new leader. And now for this final tree that we're going to be planting, I'm going to plant it into this little pot that I made earlier in the year. I made this pot out of a stuff called polymer clay. Quite strong too, as it's not like ceramic clay, it's just a plastic. And I made little feet here on the bottom I think this will look quite nice in this little pot. And I'm actually not sure if it will survive being in such a small pot, but I would like to experiment and see. I'm not too worried if this dies, but if it does survive, it'll look really nice. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the thicker roots that don't feed the tree so much. Maybe half them in size, because these are the ones that's preventing me from getting it into the pot. All right, that looks pretty good there. And instead of cutting these, I think I'm okay to just push them inside as I want as much roots as possible for this tree. And if I can get that to stay in there and shorten the height so there's not as much strain on the roots to feed so many leaves, we could in fact get a pretty successful instant mame bonsai. Let's get some drainage mesh in this little pot. When making it, I decided to put one big large drainage hole and then I made three little holes for wire. This wire doesn't seem to want to fit in these holes. Let's see if we can make them a little bigger. I think I made the hole with a one millimeter wire and this new wire that I have is one and a half millimeter. Not a problem because this is a very small pot. I wanna try and keep as much moisture in here as possible. So what I'm going to do is just put a little scoop of that bonsai soil mix in the bottom of the pot. And now here I have got some sphagnum moss I'm gonna cut this up into little pieces into the pot. And sphagnum moss retains a lot of moisture. And I don't mind the roots being directly in contact with this, as the sphagnum moss has lots of really good properties like being antifungal, antibacterial. And because it's so aerated, you can get lots of oxygen in there and it promotes lots of new roots. Let's just bring this wire here. Really take your time with mame trees as they're very delicate. You don't want to damage anything. So if it takes you five minutes to get a tree wired in, let it take you five minutes because better than rushing it and maybe hurting a part of the tree or doing something silly that may damage it. I like to treat it like a mindfulness exercise. So that's that tree now wired in the pot. Now once I have this other layer of sphagnum, I'm going to top that off with some more bonsai soil. See how that's almost spongy with the moss? I'm not afraid to compact this down. So let's have a look at this now. As you can see, it's a little bit top heavy still. So I'm gonna begin cutting off the flower buds to begin with. They have quite a lot of weight on them. All right, it's not top heavy anymore. And I would just like to say, as a side note, roses in general don't really like to be planted in shallow containers like this but if you get the dwarf varieties like this one with the smaller leaves they don't mind to be planted in containers so much although reducing it to something 
very small like this. It may not like it, but I'm just gonna make sure that it stays well watered. As is right now, there's still too many leaves on it. So I'm gonna just begin pruning it down to all the first sets of leaves. As it's quite heavy on this side, I'm gonna take off this whole branch. A little stub there I can take off. All right. I've pruned it quite a lot and I think it's going to be okay like this. I'm just packing in as much soil as I can so that the tree's roots will have lots of sources of water. And I think I'm just gonna top this off with some moss. And there you guys have it. That's how I create bonsai from like a little rose bush. If you do not wish for your tree to be so small in a mame bonsai pot, you can, however, place the tree into a larger pot and then over time the tree will thicken and you'll be able to get maybe a shohin or even larger sized tree. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. I really love to hear what you guys think and have you tried anything like this yourself from a rose? And if you have any tips for me on how to improve these bonsai or things that you would do differently, I'm always open to new ideas. If you'd like to stay updated on these little mame bonsai trees, follow me on Instagram. It's just at Notion Bonsai and you'll be able to see the progression of all the things that I do off camera there. But on that, thank you so very much for watching. Mm -hmm.